this hour this week. And uh, to our to our three councillors on Zoom, we have Councillor uh, John Forbes, Councillor Bob Rogan, and Councillor Bob Petrie. Councillors, to um, repeat the knowledge up, please mute yourself while you don't want to speak. And if you do, Christy's here. Welcome, Christy, and, and uh, we'll be the time you today. Councillors, Chris is doing our uh, minutes for the day, so Christy, please, when you uh, play on the beginning of your spot, make sure you have a full work with Councillors, just to remind everyone of the webcasting of the meeting, the meeting will be recorded for placement on Council's website for the purpose of broadening knowledge and participation in Council issues and demonstrating Council's commitment to openness and accountability. All speakers must ensure their comments are relevant to the issue at hand and to refrain from making personal comments or criticism or mentioning any private information. No other persons are permitted to record the meeting unless specifically, or specifically authorised by Council to do so. The open prayer, we give thanks for the contribution by our pioneers, early settlers, and for those who brought the various awards from the Gravity of Tenerville community we have today. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be accepted to the eyesight, O Lord. Amen. Acknowledging the country, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land that we meet on today, and also like to pay respect to elders past, present, and emerging of the Yakabal, Kamilaroi, and Mundanai nations, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal people present. No apologies, councillors. Do you want to hear any disclosures or declarations of interest? No. Confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting. Councillors, if would someone that, that was uh, in attendance at that meeting I'd like to move that the meeting on the 22nd of July 2020 is a true and correct record of this? Councillor Michael Petrie, thank you. Second, Councillor Brian Murray, thank you. All in favour. Yes, yes. Yes, table of documents, urgent late supplement items of business. There's no community consultation or public access. I do have a very minute. Councillors, it's on in your hard copies, page 25. It's item MM3 slash 20, suppress the local government representation, the new national cabinet. And very supportive of our president of our um, local government, New South Wales, Linda Scott. Happy to do the mural minute. And um, with number two, the deputy mayor and myself will um, formulate um, a meeting and join meet with our state and federal members to um, push this uh, board issue along and we get representation on that uh, on that board. Any questions, councillors, to do with that? Could I move to the second action? I'll move. Councillor Sawyer, I'll take you as a second. I do, because I, I do like to have a second for the real minute. I keep raising my hand, but no one's seeing it. Uh, Councillor, just bear with me. I'll go to Councillor McNish. Councillor McNish, do you have a question? Yeah, no, it's more, more a comment, Mr. Mayor. I agree with the sentiment of this. Yeah. But what I've been reading in the last few weeks, this National Cabinet just have to waste of time. They all get together, have a lovely meeting, pull by hour, that sort of stuff. Then the premiers go off and do their own things. So, I mean, it's probably good that we do have representation on it, but I can't see any better than public the way it seems to be going at the moment. I, I made your comments, Council, and, and, and uh, I do, I do, um, right now, and the CEO and I spoke about it yesterday, I'm on board this, when we're doing the Zoom meeting uh, with our cross board commissioner. The, the importance of this, I reckon, stands out now because, especially with the board closures and, and with the in our area, with how much it means to us to have that local government knowledge, you know, there it seems to be a bit lacking there at the moment. They seem to be doing a lot in the state to do with our southern neighbours in Victoria. This is only my opinion, but but very little to do with us. I think when it first came, it was like it didn't even exist, or oh, it didn't even get mentioned. You know, but we've had a bit of a win there, and that all been tidied up. I do do a lot of work from our property board commissioner, I think. But I do know your comments. Councillor Brogan, I apologise, I'll come back to you. Councillor Brogan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Look, I also had my hand up earlier about the additional business uh, just in relation to the bushfire inquiry being released yesterday. I just think we should touch on it at the end of the meeting. But with regard to this, I have some concerns because if local government then join the National Cabinet, then you want, then industry will want to be in there, farmers will want to be in there, etc., 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 and it will become large and unwieldy. At the moment, um, 
as we know, even in state government, any cabinet meeting is fully confidential. Um, you don't even know what's going to cabinet quite often uh, until, it, until um, after the meeting. So I just think there could be a problem here with adding people besides the um, Prime Minister and the Premiers or the Chief Ministers of the Territories uh, in that uh, scenario. So I'm actually not fully in support of this. I think it could become a problem. No, Councillor, and you're entitled to the opinion, but I do see that where our president of local government New South Wales is coming from, asking for that support. We are a member of local government New South Wales, uh, and, and as mayor, I'm happy to uh, to be supportive of that. To have the, the, the chairperson of ALGA involved with those um, meetings, whether we get there or not, but at least we're uh, knocking on the door, but I, I do um, note your comments. Councillor Berry. Mr. Mayor, uh, it's carried by another name, I believe. And with, with COAG, you didn't have any of these other groups in there other than local government and uh, uh, state governments and federal government. And also, we're supposed to be a federation, not a union. I think the time we were a union of states rather than a federation. Why being handled? Once again, the comments are rather uh, noted carefully. Any other comments, questions, councillors? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. Yes, Councillor Falls. Is there any other Whatever. You still there, Councillor? Unmute. Yeah, still there? Yeah, there you are, Councillor. Yeah, well, basically, I, mean, I, I just think it's just, uh, just uh, an unnecessary addition to the National Cabinet, as, as uh, Councillor Bronwyn uh, alluded to. So, yes, I'll be against it also. Well, it's a mayoral minute. Yes, mayoral minute, thank you. But, but I'm, I'm happy, you know, we're all got our, uh, our own opinions and, uh, and I'll have to acknowledge that today. Pleasure with thank you. Yourself, Councillor, and, um, and Councillor uh, Bronwyn, please. Right, Councillors. Oh. What's the mirror on it? So it's there. Council Merlin, page 26. It's item COM 18 20, community contribution donations to 2021 on each year. Sorry. Yes. Oh, I apologize. Thank you, Norman. Council, we do have an item in confidential. Later on the meeting, and it's item E and B, 18 slash 20. The overdrive is on the ground. So, yeah, thank you. Seconded by Councillor McNish. So, thank you. All in favour? Yeah, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Norman. We'll go back to the next item on page 26 in your hard copy. COM 18 slash 20. Community contribution donations to 2221 on each year. No, I'll move the second to deal with this, please. Councillor Tori, I'll take you again. Councillor Berry, I'll take you as a second. Thank you. Councillor, just to do with this one, it was a bit of an oversight when we had a meeting the other day. That's a standard thing with that, that all the schools get 150 for their um, presentation. Um, then realising later that Mingula aren't operational at the moment. So just to put that 150 for scattered here to the West Bank Gaming So it's, it's just for tidying that up. All good, any questions for that? Okay. No, I've got one. I've got my hand yeah, up. Yeah, one, yes. Um, it's also the high school formal has been given five hundred dollars, but the formals have been banned. I believe, isn't there a bit of an outcry about the formals not being able to be held this year? I'm councillor. I'm not sure of that. Yeah, that, that, that they they stopped any singing, any um, big assembly things. No, I do that with the, with the choirs and stuff like that. Councillor Sawyer, do you have a comment? Yes, the Premier was on the news and said she would do everything possible to get the school leaders their form before the end of the year, but it will not be before the HSC exams. But it has not been totally ruled out as yet. Thanks, Councillor Sawyer. Well, we'll leave that as is and, and somehow, some way. But if it's a, a thing that is being left to deal with it later on. Okay, any other questions, Council, to do with this item? All in favour? Ken Carey, thank you, Council. Council, move on to, oh, I guess I do need to know, I think the 
the councillors from that committee because um, it's not an easy thing to, to uh, allocate money when you've got a, a huge application to so I do, I do want that note and, uh, and for them it was made that day it was um, a pretty big gig if I look at the sort of the move on to page 32 in your hard copy councillors is COM 19 slash 20, Chetterfield Bike Clean Review. So I have a move for a second to deal with this, please. Councillor Brian Murray, thank you. Seconder, Councillor Michael Petrie, and I thank you. And as always, a welcome, a very well dressed Mr. David Council. So, David, I'll hand over to you to present this report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Council, I was presenting an update of the uh, Bike Clean Review that the plan we previously had in place. Um, but it came due for a review, and it had been quite some time before we looked at it. So, basically, the, the plan includes a number of updates of works that had been done over the years. We've actually completed a number of um, extensions to Cycleway um, up along Scott Street there to the football field. So, we now have a fairly extensive off road um, extension, but we still have some outstanding items and on, on road line markings and widening works that are still there from the original plan. So we've worked those there and they may remain with our target for the future. We will um, complete those or um, move forward to, to another plan. So uh, basically what we're intending is to put the plan on public display on, on our website and um, get the, get the opportunity to comment. Um, there may be submissions for some, some uh, change in our priorities. Um, and then uh, if there are, aren't any submissions received, we're proposing to adopt the plan. <laughs> Um, and then, however, if there are um, submissions received, we'll then bring those submissions back to council with a further discussion on, on the plan and the submission. Any questions today, council, to do with this report? Yeah, Mr. Sayer. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I haven't um, spoken to Nolan yet, but uh, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea once the 28-day uh, period is over, to take the plan and any submissions to the council. Because it would be a bit cumbersome to um, try and build a, a council meeting to fix the um, protocols. And I suspect that the councils would have some things that they'd like to submit as well. It would be a bit easier to submit it in a workshop without having have to have a formal process of officially rolling the council is something they're going to approve anyway, but just say the councillors. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll place it in a, a workshop agenda so everyone gets a chance to contribute. Well, yes. Yes. Councillor Rock, what about you, Councillor Rock? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just um when the um CEO was speaking then a lot of it didn't come through clearly, but I gathered I heard the word workshop, I'm not sure, but um, I'd like to make a comment and a request to, to have a workshop about this and maybe also include the um, um, the footpath one as well. Yeah. The, re the reason is it's it's been talked about and touted on and off for a while now about what might happen in the future recreation wise to our town dam. That is whether there's going to be boardwalks or more picnic areas down there or something, opening up more access to to people. Um, and I think it'd be great to have a bike path that runs north, south, uh, but on the eastern side of the highway. In other words, probably down Logan Street to Otterbeeren Park, something like that. And, and I'd suspect that that'll probably turn up in a submission during the consultation period. Um, so I'm just wondering why, um, whether we can actually lock in the workshop. I'm not sure if the CEO asked for that or not because I couldn't really um, hear everything you were saying, but that's all I've got to say, thanks. Yeah, for right, you're right on the money, that's exactly what the, what the CEO was referring to. So, so we'll make that happen in a workshop in the near future. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Robin, you had a question? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The CE has, uh, a already attended to it fairly well. I was just confirming that um, once these these three plans, this one, the pedestrian and the road management plan go on um, um, out to the public, that there's then the opportunity to deal with issues that we have already having read, read them. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions to, to Dave? Councillor Dave? All happy to um, lock recommendation there. 
to receive a note against Gary. Thank you. Councillors, move on to page 34. When you hard copy, it's item C, I'm in 20, slash 20. To fix a for pedestrian access and mobility plan review. Move in a second to here, please. Councillor Berry, I'll thank you. Second to please. Councillor Murray, I'll thank you. And once again, I'll hand over to you, Dr. Zip. Yes, um, Councillors, similar type of plan. Uh, this one deals with pedestrian access and mobility. So this, this deals with crossing points on footpaths, actually being able to get, um, particularly the, the elderly or uh, the young, we've got to remember that young children too, when they're being brought along with parents, um, they don't have that perception of um, steps and uh, drops and the other footpath perspective as they step on the road. So it's important that we have proper crossing points um, and connectivity from the footpath across the road and to other footpaths. So it's not so much a, a bike plan for off-road or cycle, but this one deals with more um, individual spots of connectivity on our footpaths um, for the disabled, for the parking network, um, it's that connectivity arrangement. So um, again, a similar thing, we have done some work um, with our care action list over the years, but there's still quite a number of outstanding matters to be done. Um, a number of them relate to bringing uh, particularly cream rates and corners up to standard. Um, Tenerfield being an, an older developed um, rural area, as uh, many, many other um, towns are, we have very narrow um, pedestrian uh, crossing cream rates. Um, so anything, any new work we do, we'd be looking to bring those up to a better standard so they have a more even gradient. They're a bit wider for tram ramps and um, disabled uh, walkers to get across as well. So a lot of those items remain uh, on our project list. As we uh, get funding from budget to budget, we'll be trying to address those on a priority basis. There are, there are certainly some other lower order priorities in the action plan that we haven't necessarily changed around too much at this stage. But there are some, um, there's a couple of items dealing with missing links near schools. For example, so the, a, a connection to a school is obviously a much higher use than just a general residential area where there's probably limited use. So maybe there might be some submissions or considerations to bring those about. But at the moment, we've left the priority pretty much as they are, and we're just keep ticking away and working away as we get uh, budget funds available. So again, a similar process, which are uh, proposing to put the plan out on public display, receive any submissions. And as mentioned, we can more than happily come back and um, discuss the implications in a workshop, but particularly the financial implications too. Before I go to the council for any questions or comments to do in the report, David, with the with the like the last report and this one and the next one, I think it's really I just want to note with the with number four for the asset management, like it clearly states that those funds are going to be made to work to available. But it's really good that, that council's on the front foot here. But having all the plans and that in place to ready the all wood like a chop and ready project, and I think that's a really good. It's particularly um, of importance too that even though we might have the ability to fund them in our budget here, if the funds become available, if grants become available, at least we've got the priorities there to deal with. And so, some of these matters aren't you know, millions of dollars, some of them are only $5,000, $10,000. Yep. Um, but the other thing is too that if, if there's development, we want to attract development to the town. If there are developers come in and make some large movements, you know, develop a lot of property, if, if there's a, an issue right outside the front, we can then apply um, that as a connection to this plan to the developer and uh, get, a, get a bonus there. Good. Any other questions today, John? Councillor McKish. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, very good report, though. I've got a question for some of the speakers, like priority by um, look. 200 metres of removing the grass and putting this bit of out, $30,000. I would have bought it for a bit of roundup, five cats, rack and rock, uh, passion wheel, and I don't know what I'm not going to do here, I'm probably going to work out. But, uh, I just think. It's big as to me a pretty rubbery. Like, I can't see 30 cows, let alone private house. There's no way in the world we're spending 30 cows on that. Um, your, your comment, where do you get these figures from? I know these are probably getting across on the community and that sort of thing. This seems so much. Certainly, so, so thank you, Mr. Council, for your question. Um, certainly, we haven't gone to um, you know, a finite estimate for every job. We haven't gone and estimated 
this, this week will be here for four hours or five hours, if they are, so we do the right base. But we have, uh, we have certainly um, increased the number of the figures over the previous plan. I think the, the example you gave there is a perfect example. I think in the previous plan, I think that one was for about $500 or $1,000. So we certainly have, and uh, I've been directly involved in that, so I can talk to that. But I certainly have increased a number of things. It is that, yes, you're right, we can go down to that example, throw a bit of rake around up or you know, knock, knock off the weeds and spray a bit of bitumen. I can pretty much guarantee that within 12 months we'll be covered with grass again. Uh, probably the, the quickest way we can get grass to grow on, on the surface, on, on a gravel surface, is to actually spray it with um, mulch or bitumen because I think it actually encourages the seed to grow. Um, what we actually need, that $30,000, $30, how we need to do it appropriately is we actually need to uh, make sure we have a good solid um, gravel pavement underneath, like a road, because really a, a pathway or a cycleway is a um, it is actually a part of a road. So we've actually got to go and actually construct the pavement, make sure we've got gravel there, and then seal it, and seal it to a width of the grass and go deep along the yeah, you can see examples of that even on our road network. We have um, sealed roads out there that have got grass literally growing up in the middle of them because they don't get the track on The grass is fine the way the seeds will get established. So um, some, some of those um, parts of the road around the town have, have actually been diminished by more than half. They're, they're probably not compliant in any way back at all because they've got tree roots and uh, grass growing in them. So we've we'll got to make sure that we have the proper width and Really, the only the best method is the pouring concrete. Put the way and say it's pretty much through there, but then the cost would probably be ten times that. Um, certainly, that that cost has been increased to account for um, partly to do a profit, to do a profit job, so that we don't have to go back and do continual maintenance. Um, the the other thing is we we need to actually make sure that it's connected. Um, we can do it efficiently because. On, on a large road, if we're doing a major highway job where there's eight metres wide and a clogger of the road, we can gain much better efficiency for the glass graders. Whereas if we're just doing a little bit of widening, it's much harder, we, we're, it's much more difficult to actually get machines in there to compact it for people. Um, you know, we, we can't actually compact a, a, say, a one or two metre wide pathway with gravel because we physically can't get the large rollers in there. We've got to use smaller equipment, so it's going to be slower. So. We lose efficiencies on these smaller jobs. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Councillor Dave. Your reply, this one. Councillor Brown, is anyone in the room? I'll go to you, Councillor Sawyer, then I'll come to you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Sawyer. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just a comment. I note on page 27 where the uh, section of High Street, just new road, white real estate, the only even old concrete. Be prepared for a bit of public backlash. We're going to go ahead and replace that with public pages. Some people are very attached to that old footpath there. Just a comment. Yeah, no. uh, yeah so uh, thank you for the comments. There, there are some <coughs> other treatments too, like we don't have, and that comes down to the community, and this is the opportunity for that submission. There's a number of different treatments we can look at. We can just go to straight concrete, rip up the old concrete, and pour grey concrete. It's not that appealing, particularly to tourists, or we can go to trouble paving it, which is then bleeds in with the rest of the main street. Um, but if, if we really want to cut back and do a, a sort of average retain our funds that we can just uh, do a costly treatment to try and hold the old concrete in place. You, you retain that old feel, but then you've, uh, you've got to probably have a look at the appearance. And you're, again, it all comes back to maintenance. If we don't do it properly, we're going to have it popping out from the epoxy breaking out, and we're going to be back there again in you know, 10 years' time. We, we really, with all of our assets, we really have to look at the, the work we do, we walk away from it and let it expire its full life. We've got to come back to this possible maintenance. Councillor Bromley, you have a question to the report? Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Page three of the report, uh, where it clearly says that this report for pedestrian access and mobility is just for the town of Tenterfield. Is there any reason why we cannot have the villages included in such a report um, as a shy report rather than just for the town? And I know it's referenced in the traffic report, but for instance, in Drake, we have people walking or using their mobility scooters on the edge of a major highway because there is no footpath. So I was just thought that 
you know, this, this plan has been in place now for six years. Is it time to actually include villages? Uh, the council, there's, there's certainly no reason why we can't expand the, the report. We, we have just did update the previous one, but um, we, we can include uh, villages like Craig and Hurtsville. We have got um, some works in the pipeline that we're seeking for those villages, um, but through different grants and opportunities. So we're, we're hoping to get some improvements there. Um, again, if it becomes a case of affordability, and I'm happy whichever way the community want to go, but the further we expand it, the more cost we actually put ourselves to. It, it'll be fantastic if we can expand the reports, we include an urban bill, uh, any of the reports, um, like that, we can include an urban bill, um, great. But the thing is, we, we lessen the chance of being able to attract developers that are going to actually pay for it. Um, there's probably you know, limited opportunity there, and we're then going to be burdened by the budget if we can well and do it. But it's just a matter of how high we set our goals. Thank you, David. Good question, Councillor. I know the staff will work hard to uh, try and include that, but as Dave said, it's, um, I look at that, especially with the beautification plans of Great and Urban North, those plans to do a bit of a buffer. There is a proposal, so we're actually um, working with the Transport New South Wales to try to revive those plans and just repair them so that they, they can. I have got uh, transport from New South Wales once on the, the highways. Um, if we can seek any um, funding opportunities for that, we will. Um, but again, we just have to be mindful of what we can afford to do. And also, there's the, that connectivity. We can't just build isolated footpaths. There'll be a flow on effect that we have to build it to something or have other crossings, and then there's just a continual additional cost um, that we're still leaving ourselves up for. Thank you. Councillor Berry. Just to do with that, um, is that the footpath from there from the hospital to the medical centre, or are you referring to no disability access to the hospital itself? The hospital itself. Is that right? Oh, there's nothing really good there. Okay. I thought that, that would be a, 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 an issue for the health department. North Coast Health Department. Yeah, all the footpaths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Seven in your hard copy, died of EC 012 slash 20, View Road Network Management Plan, Retitled Road Asset, Asset Management Plan. Can I move the second of here, please? Move in second, please. Councillor Berry, thank you. Second by Councillor Fish, and I thank you. And once again, I'll hand over to you, Dave, to present the report. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillors, again, we have another plan uh, for our road network management plan that uh, is due for review. Um, we're taking this opportunity to have a, um, a pretty broad um, view of it. I'll just make a couple of things here. We've, we've actually taken the opportunity to review some of our standing council policies as well that relate to um, road matters, so things like curb and gutter, um, you know, what we do with credit um, curbs. Uh, we, we have a number of policies that are really just one line statements. Um, they probably don't need to stand alone as a separate policy, so rather than have multiple policies for you know, people in the community to try to get their on. Um, we're taking the opportunity to actually combine about eight of them into the, the, the road asset plan. So, so they all combine, they all deal with roads. Um, so that, that's one of the, the changes in the document. Um, plus we're also taking the opportunity to just uh, revise some of the um, intervention levels. So before with maintenance grading, we had ranges of when we uh, would do um, intervals of grading. We've got to define those and try to bring those out a little bit. Um, again, it's, it keeps coming back to the finance. 
abilities, we, we want to be able to have the plan a bit more reflective of what we can actually sustainably afford. Um, as, as the existing plan stands, we come up close, we can't afford to do what we say in the plan. So we're looking to have the plan a bit more reasonable to what we can afford as a community. Um, and if we match that with that level of service we're, we're saying, we, we're going to do. So, so this plan again, we'll, uh, we're proposing will stand for 28 days. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll get some submissions, either positive or against. Um, we'll take some submissions or change. Um, we'll, we'll then come back as um, to the extent we can come back to the website to go to the next submission or discuss the, the detail of the plan. Um, we have also made a couple of recommendations that we changed the name. Um, that's just more to re refine the name in, in line with other asset plans we have. So we have stormwater asset plans, mass asset management plans, we have, we have um, water asset management plans, so we're just calling this one the road asset management plan. Um, to try to combine some of those documents so we just don't have a, a number of unwieldy documents that you know, the community just don't have, you know, have difficulty trying to place all together what they've got for a place to watch. Thank you, Dave. Questions to Dave, to Councillor Bromman. I'll go to you, Councillor McNish, you've indicated. Then I'll come to you, Councillor Bromman. Councillor McNish. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question. I think, Dave, you answered that all submissions will go to a workshop on the Council. Is that correct? Uh, no, sorry. Um, we, we, will, we will receive submissions. Um, we will have workshop. It'll more likely be to the October meeting. We, we won't be able to come back to the September meeting because we won't be able to do the 28 days. Presentation. 28 days, it's a fair while. It really doesn't give people a lot of time to get stuff out there and actually put something together if they want to make a submission. So it's probably best to have the 28 days that we come back in October. Yeah, that is to, you know, just, I think I asked this question last time. Um, I've heard a couple of requests from people who want to be of those, put into the road network. This is the opportune time to do it, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to put submissions in and yes. um, discuss it in the workshop and then have a council meeting to decide to adopt them or the reasons why they can't be done. That's what it's certainly a feature council. It's the opportunity for the public to make submissions like that. Yeah. Um, but, I think the other plan thing is they really need to justify why and how it fits within the plan. It's not just that you know, we want to road for because there's a number of people that, to be honest, there's people out there that would like us to do their driveway for them. So, um, so it really is a matter of yes, making that submission, justifying why, whether it's the number of properties served or you know, the, um, you know, there might be business interest there. I think one of the other councillors raised specific agricultural um, industries to need support. So, there, there may be other reasons why there's a general interest um, specifically for council and the general community. Um, so they, they make that comment, we'll consider it. Um, we'll also then be able to come back and look at uh, if there's a number of them, we can then reflect back what the um, financial implications are going forward. Thanks, Dave. Councillor Broward. Uh, thanks, um, Mr. Mayor. I went into the Council website to try and find the road registers that's in the report. It said uh, the road registers are, are listed on the council website. Well, I went in, I searched, I went into roads, I went everywhere. I cannot find that road register. So, um, is it there on the on the new website? Because I'm damned if I can find it. The other thing is, is 28 days actually long enough for something as important as, as this, where you're now talking about? maybe not grading something for more than three years. And um, I'd suggest that we need to advise people of this proposed plan more than just online or in the pamphlet. There needs to be media releases or whatever to actually alert people to this so that they can respond. This is a pretty big, uh, there's some significant changes here. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Your first question, uh, the, the listings, they, they were on the website as an appendix. I think the Bridges list was the only one actually contained within the original document. So they should have been there, but we just have to check because we did update the website there a few months ago. So they may have dropped off there. Um, get those. Um, the uh, second part of the question, 28 days. Um, I said, yeah, I certainly agree. Um, there's no reason why 
we can't extend that period, I'm more than happy to give uh, everybody it's probably better for the long longevity of the document that people get more time. So there's no reason why we can't allow two months um, for, for them to consider it. Um, the, until such time as we adopt the new plan, the old one still stands. So we, we're not sort of, you know, not doing anything or we're not going to change our activities for the, on the basis of the new plan until such time as it's been fully considered and adopted. So until that time, the old plan just stands. Um, so extending the, the uh, consultation period is um, not fine by the department because uh, certainly we give the community more time to receive and acknowledge the plan, but also have that opportunity to thoroughly discuss it, even if it's at um, community meetings, they may want to try and arrange a community meeting to gather the uh, things of others. But yeah, I can't see any real reason why yeah, we can't consider a further period of um, for the submission. Yep. No problems at all. Now, may I have a supplementary then, Mr. Mayor? So, I'm sorry, Councillor, can you repeat that? It may I then have a supplementary? In that case, I'd be proposing an amendment that we change the 28 days to two months. Yes. Quite time to do that, Councillor. So, one we change from 28 days to, um, to 56 days, is that correct? Well, that's not two months, but I mean, just that Dave said. It oh, we do need the word, what we're we going to put in there. Make it two months. Sixty days. Sixty days. Right. Not thirty days in every month, either. Right. 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 Councillor McNish, thank you. Do you want to speak to the amendment, Councillor? Mr. Mayor, I speak yes for 60 days. You'll get your Councillor. Well, well, it's just that, for instance, if this goes out now with 28 days on it, I was yep. there looking at the road register on the web page so people can see whether their roads would be impacted or not. Yep. And it's just, oh, I couldn't find it. So, um, and a lot of other people may not have uh, internet access and may have to come to town to try and get a copy of what that road register is or uh, or to refer to the old document to see what the proposed changes are from you know because we're introducing a new uh, category of road if this does go ahead so there and I think that should be highlighted in any in any um, information that goes out and so 28 days is going to shorten that time length if people can't even find the information that's relevant so this has got to get out to people, then they've got to have time to ascertain the information and then they've got to be able to get that submission in. So your 28 days is getting eroded all the time. So that's why I'm suggesting, uh, as Dave said, he was comfortable with two months. So 60, 60 days is actually less than two months. So that's fine by me. Councillor, when you say other category road, you're referring to the, to the uh, Class E road, yes? Y yes, we're... Uh, uh, we're uh, Dave had said that the idea was to introduce a new class of road that got less attention yeah. because of the um, issue of getting round to them all. I just want to clarify on that so the rest of the council knew what you're talking about. Councillor McNish, for the second of the amendment, do you want to speak to the uh, amendment? Right, I'll take those two councillors for the amendment. Speaking against the amendment, Councillor Berry, you've indicated? Yeah, yes, I'm not speaking against the amendment itself. Yeah. Speaking against the Yeah, because if you start getting 60, uh, 60 days or two months or whatever, it's going to be too long and people will lose interest. If you put it down to 42 days, which is six weeks, and like Roman, uh, Councillor Bronman said, you've got that period where we've got to just make sure it's on the net loss, pretty sure we can do it in a week. And then you let the Progress Association know, or I think they'll know, suddenly a couple of phone calls from people let out know, or yep. vice versa, six weeks is more than adequate. If you put out 60 days, I'm sure people will just move into the line. Like, they could all, like, people tend to burn themselves. Like, you're done. Mr. Mayor, to do a deal and put it to the whatever the closest Monday is to around the 45 day mark, if someone can grab a calendar. You want to speak, Kevin? Move to the amendment. She has moved to the amendment with 60 day in it. Yep. Any other speakers against the amendment? Yeah. Councillor uh, Peters. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I reckon you should leave it at 28 days. I'd call out of the government. 
We're dealing with the minutes. I can't take what the two speakers for to against it. We'll go back to Councillor Bromman for some closing comment to do with the amendment. Uh, look, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Look, I just think that 28 days is um, is too short. I don't mind if we bring it back down from the 60. I was just going to the 60 week or the two months because Dave said he was comfortable with that. Um, but if councillors wanted to come back um, halfway between and make it around that 40 days or whatever, I'm open to that fine. But I just think 28 days is too short. The information is not really readily available on the internet, on our website, let alone this has to get out to people first. So they're going to end up with something like maybe maybe two weeks or one week to even um, formulate a response and get it back in. And it's just not enough at the moment. Well, Councillor, I'll give you the opportunity. I'm probably breaking all rules. You've got an amendment there with a time frame. That's why I did ask of 60 days. You wish to change that? Well, I'm, I'm happy with the 60, but if councillors in general feel that 28 is too short, but 60 is too long, I'm comfortable with a different figure. Finally, I see you heading for the calculator. What you work? I'm on the, on the website. Oh, okay. I that off, but it's on there, but I wouldn't Well, it needs to be figured that it works like in a, in, a, in, a, in a Monday to Friday week. That's what I'm getting at. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Whatever's closest to um, the normal cutoff day, whether it's a Friday afternoon or whatever. Um, it's just 28 is, is too short. It, you know, at least another two weeks from that, um, it gives people a chance to get the information and be able to check those registers and then uh, and do the comparison. Uh, and particularly if you are going to have a community meeting, um, there's going to be very little time in order in that, very little time to do it if it's within 28 days. Councillor, I'll put up your amendment for the 60 days. Else to amend it to something different? Councillor Mark. Could we not remind the can't we to remain on 60 days and then when we're here, we just remind it? Well, we'll advertise something for 60 days. I don't. Well, the way I said this, this an extra burden on their staff, I feel. But the same, mind you, Councillor. Um, obviously, it'll go to advertising, and, and Councillor Roman, quite rightly, has, has made the comment about how, how it needs to be well advertised, and I fully support that, and it will be. Um, but yeah, if it's, if whatever the time frame is, is what the time frame, I don't think we can make all and, and say, oh, well, it's quite down now, we just cut it off. By law, you, you can't make that rule on the run, I don't think. I think it's interesting to point out where it is. Well, it points all about the vote against the amendment. So I'm going to put this amendment, okay? Amendment there. Sorry, sorry. So if you wanted an extra a day for the duration of the to push out whether or not probably about the 4th of October, we'll get to the amendment meeting. Right. In terms of meeting, something like this, and July. Right. So how many days is that, Bob? Six weeks from that. Yeah, so it's still two days at the end of this week, plus the Give me a figure. 42 days. Okay, I'll, I'll do that in a minute. No, no, what I'm going to do is say, well, Councillor Bowen, and I'm making around a bit here, but we'll get there. There's a there's a figure for over 42 days. Uh, yes, um, and I've, I was just trying to say, I've looked at it also on my calendar for the 12th of October. So 42 days, or actually put the date 12th of October, and um, uh, happy to amend the amendment to that. So we'll make it instead of 60 days, make it 42 days? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Right. That's, that's the amendment we're going to put up. Sorry. Thank you. Councillor, uh, Councillor McNish, you happy with that? Yes, I am. Okay. Right, we put the amendment that the time frame will be changed from 28 to 42, all in favour. Against. The amendment's up. Right, uh, we got it. Check to see if I want to zoom. Councillor Robin, obviously, your point. Councillor Brody and Councillor um, Paul, how was your vote there? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear Councillor Paul? Yeah, no, I saw that amendment. Okay. 
Councillor Rose. Yeah, so was I, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, both. Thank you, Greg. Councillor uh, Victoria, I'm sorry. Um, right up. So no more questions, no more discussion to do report. We'll put the, with that amendment. So we adopt the, the whole office recommendation with that amendment. All in favour? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor, we move on to page 40 in the hard copy. Item EC 13 slash 20. Submission of petition request to upgrade the segment of Triple Bag Road Break. Can I have a move in the second here, please, to deal with this item? Councillor Kiss, thank you. And Councillor uh, Michael, thank you. So thank you. You're on line, Erica? Yes, Mr. Mayor. And I'll hand over to our Manager of Custom Service and Governance Records to present the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you. The purpose of this report is to advise Council of a petition signed by 85 residents requesting that Tenerfieldshire Council upgrade the section of Sugarbag Road that links Paddy's Flat Road Tabulum with Cheviot Hills Road Drake to all-weather two-wheel drive standard. Council received a petition on 18 June 2020 from 90 residents who live either on or near or access Sugarbag Road Drake. 85 of the petitioners have requested that a defined segment of Sugarbag Road be upgraded, upgraded following the bushfire events that impacted the area during 2019. Five of the petitioners indicate that they do not support the petition request. The petition summary and action petition, the recent bushfires have made clear the importance of alternative routes for residents, visitors and emergency services during extreme emergencies. Completing the joining section between the two sections of Sugarbag Road would provide an additional access route. We, the undersigned, request Tenderfieldshire Council upgrade the section of Sugarbag Road that links Paddy's Flat Road Tabulum with Cheviot Hills Road Drake to all weather two-wheel drive standard. Council is in the process of reviewing the road network management plan and Sugarbag Road is an asset defined within the plan. Council may wish to address the condition of the road in future works as part of the plan, contingent on sufficient financial resources being secured through appropriate federal and or state roads <coughs> grant programs. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Council's office recommendations. Any questions or Going to do an office of recommendation. Councillor McDick, yes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I um, thank you, Erica. Just a bit of history on this request. And I went through some stuff in, but I just couldn't find out what the actual distance they want. Very short, I think, less than a kilometre from memory. And the uh, memory goes back, I can't remember with uh, Brian Turner's time or with Stephen Onion's list about. The engineer wanted this road open and the community were vehemently against it. That's why it didn't happen. Okay, and I'll pick their privacy up to the back road like that. So I think what's happened is the buyer has really made them aware that they need another access to the sugar bag and then onto the Chevy Hills Road. In fact, that 85 people support it. I told the spot back when I saw that. It's down there. It's really Possibly the other way around, which was what was last time. Um, just a question to would that count, would that petition count as a submission? Or would that be a period? So the the opposition to the recommendation process. Yes. Uh, just to take care of it, the captain of the rule of five years ago, he supports it for the Yeah. Before I go to other questions to do with the report, there's a couple of things I just run one's a question for myself to to you, Fiona, and for Dave. Um, is what way to write what Pass the road that would end up being if it went ahead. That's just a question. The, 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 whatever. And um, the other one is because I've just been to note on page 41 on the hard copy. In that last paragraph, 
And it's the world we rely on. Catherine Gish, you raised a really good point to do with the emergency that we went through in 2019. And, and, and a complete turnaround from where it was years ago where they didn't want anything done with the road. Now they wish to do something with the road. And we need to acknowledge our community. That's a really good, um, that's a really good argument to go forward with when, when we as a council are sourcing funding from state or federal government to do such jobs. And, and that's why I note this last paragraph because, you know, and, and it clearly states here, the future works of part of the plan contingent and sufficient financial resources being sourced through appropriate federal or state road grants programs. Rather than because a group of people have just signed a petition and we're going to wait for the rest of the shy to hop on board and do the same. So we're going to click our heels together and spend a heap of money on the, on the road. I think they need to be, you know, really um, understanding of the, of the financial constraints the council is working. I'm happy as mayor and, and, uh, and I know our CE is too to, to, um, to source funding for whatever we need to do and we can include this road. So that's much what I am. But I, I really, um, I think it's great that our community does get together and, and they've got a problem. But Take it forward as, as that, um, uh, making that road uh, like passable and usable in you know, an emergency situation is a really good argument to go forward with. So I just need to note that. Go on, yes? Any other questions from the room before we go to Councillor Brommer? Councillor Brommer. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, with our other, like the Wellington, Wellington Lookout Road, etc., we were given a map and a costing after the submission period for the road um, network when we would be considering Sugar Bag Road if this motion gets up. Would we get a map and a costing um, uh, as per the previous ones? Did you hear that, Councillor Bromwell? No. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. The other thing is that part of the road network management plan, there is a slight change or a clarification in the plan that we're proposing is that any new or additional roads have to be adopted by council anyhow. So, really, you need to be aware of the financial implications, not only of building or adopting road, but also ongoing depreciation and the impact on finances. So, we're actually proposing that any of these changes, whether it be sugar bag or corduroy uh, lookout, relative to lookout road, uh, they still have to be adopted by council anyhow, so that you're aware of the impacts that take them. That's it. Yep. Councillor Brown. 
do we, Councillor, and I'm, I'm with it being add on to the officer's recommendation, I mean, uh, Mr. C, you might advise me a bit because, with respect, I do, you know, it's a, it's a positive council that these people need to be contacted. It's a petition. And Eric, you come in any time, a bit of advice here. But I mean, do we need to get back to the to the author of the, the original letter here and, and tell them everything, the world we live in, that if we, we would be pursuing federal or state government funding to, um, to put this, you know, in, in the, the longer term plan of, of one road we will do. Yes, Mr. Sayer. Um, once council considers the ramp, uh, I had to laugh. We've got a pamp and a ramp, and I assume when Julie puts up her water management plan, we'll have a pamp, a ramp, and a wet. <laughs> um, so when the um, uh, ramp uh, goes up and council then makes a decision about what they do, then the people that put the submission will have to be advised as to not the court. Right. So which is, you know, if we're accepting what the officer's recommendation, that's just part of the thing, yes. Yeah, and through Mr. Mayor, we might just send them a, uh, a note saying that it's part of the wider process because so they, they might not have known that, but they put the yep. petition in as part of a wider process which council will be reviewing the, the ramp and the pan, and um, the decision might be made to wait on the ones that have okay. the okay. Any other questions to engineering department councillors to do with this? Okay, the officer's recommendations here. All in favour of noting? Gas for very. No, that's for voting, actually. Oh, well, I'll start again. Please vote, please. I'm not picking on you, Gas for very. No, so um, I'll start again. So all, all in favour of noting the, the recommendation? Against? Carol, thank you. That right there. <laughs> <laughs> Page 54. Page 54. You mind your school, Captain Berry. You watch the board. Item EMV 15 slash 20, Caterpillar Strategic Planning Statement. Can I have a move and a second, please? To do this report, Councillor Sawyer, I thank you. Seconded by Councillor Murray, and I thank you. And I'll hand over to Kyle to present the report. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. So, tonight's actually taken a little bit of leave this week, so I'm going to present the report to Council. So, what we've got is the, the local strategic planning statement as attached. You know, within that document, the second submission is going to see that attachment. Um, and also, too, we can be further deliberations on the Council of General Information Documents. Um, so, the next report that the local strategic planning statement adoption forms a key part of us being able to eligible to access additional funding. It's also a requirement um, of which we have um, delayed a little bit at this point in time. So, as I said, to get the report adopted by the council today, so that's So, I'm happy to take any questions. I understand we Thanks, Colin. Any questions to do with the report, Cap? Yep. I'll go here first. Any questions in the house? Yes, Councillor Berry. I'll go to Councillor Berry, then go to you, Councillor Bromwood. Councillor Berry. Mr. Mayor, on page six, you as a community of the Board of Capacity Utilities Authority, you've actually been through the department of the Then you've got some page seven. This is in the attachment, Councillor. Yes. Yeah. And on the book. Uh, Can you go back to your start and see who just wants to, to know that you go? Okay. You're on page seven, was one, was it? Yes, I see you start off with. Yes. Sorry, I'm going back and we're going to say this heritage, but nothing industry, no industry there at the moment that should be noted. Yep. Page seven, second paragraph is up all the mining. Yep. We had this, we missed out all things, which is a very important uh, mining during World War One. Fire comes in. Councillor? Which paragraph? Yeah. Paragraph two. Yeah. Paragraph two. So we left that one. Page seven. Yeah. Page seven. 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 Page all these 
Councillor Berry, this thing about native veg has historically been heavily cleared. We've got two thirds of the shire is wooded and um, we're the least cleared shire in the Northern Tablelands. Um, the, I've got the sort of a handful of spelling mistakes, which I'd be happy to work with out of session with the corporate officer. Thumbs up there in the back row, uh, Councillor. Yep. Um, also, the recommendations from the planning department included where they were talking about different numberings, etc., in their submission at the back. Um, and I was wondering why the Peter Allen Festival uh, wasn't included. And I was wondering also, where did this projected population of 5,450 in the year 2041 come from? Uh, 
My understanding with regard to the last question by our planning department projections and remembering some of the audience in particular document now and it's can, can you recall it, Councillor Broman? I heard her say that there's some of the Department of Planning projections. Yes, that's correct. So this, this document needs to fit in, obviously, with the Planning Department projections that are primarily targeted and legislated by the Department of Planning. So that's where uh, a lot of them have actually come from in terms of projections and some of the content. So there is a inflated content. What should we go back to, to Peter Allen and I'm, I'm not 100% sure what the conversations have been around that. Remembering that this is the um, strategic plan document, there is still that interlink with council's delivery plan, operational plan, and strategic plan. So what it does is to highlight actual individual um, festivals is still back in the, the delivery plan so the council gets some, some flexibility in, in being able to manage some of those things. Thank you, Collie. And my final question was in relation to, it said there may be a need to introduce new land use provisions. Uh, so page 23, uh, uh, sorry, amend land use provisions. And it was a, in a few places it talked about in relation to agriculture, uh, amending some of our land use, um, uh, you know, planning provisions. I was just wondering what type of amendments were, was the potential proposal for? Councillor, can I just ask, is that on page 23, is that in your rationale or the action? Uh, in the rationale? Yeah. Last line? Yes, thank you. And there's, But it, it, it flows through in other sections um, to do with agriculture. I could get you some more pages. But, but anyway, the general gist of it is that um, there may need to be um, changes to our... Um, uh, I think there's some on page 24 with environment, but it was to do with agriculture about different, um, um, actually changing something in, in our, I presume in our LEP, what would you be wanting to change with regard, with relation to agriculture to allow extra horticulture on small blocks because there's nothing in our LEP that says they can't do it. That is, that is quite correct, Councillor. It's more so than as we said in terms of zones or development zones, I think there's been conversations with council many times um, with a desire to more actively promote some of those margin um, radius circles, which we've talked about with council in the week, um, in actually trying to, to make sure that we get as much um, integrated culture in there. So it's basically to leave that door open if you do want to consider it. Thank you. That's it for me. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Rogan, I apologise. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just, just quickly, um, in regards to um, tourism, and which is our second planning priority by the look of it. So on page 25, yeah. um, where it talks about the rationale and then the actions, um, what I'm wondering is that there's no mention there of any, uh, any um, the potential for public lands like forests or uh, and even even some more uh, national parks to um, further um, tourism enterprise. So I'm just wondering whether uh, a line or two should not be included in there that talk about liaison or collaboration with public land managers in regards to uh, exploring the potential for for further tourism opportunities on public land within the Shire. Um, that's about it, thanks. I was just looking at that, um, I was trying to make sure that we've got the intent and I, I think a lot of these documents trying to make the view, so it really reads in the same yes. way. Yep. What I'm reading in terms of encourage cross border tourism, the last point, Councillor Rogan on the action. Yes, in the action, yep. Encouraging cross border tourism collaboration plans and land use planning to and planning controls and joint tourist group planning. 
I read that to be all land managers, not just specific to, to the council. He, I guess my, my question is, would you like it to put in there um, when I, I go through and, and try and get the, the perhaps the points for amendment? Is that the land use uh, planning control for a tourist uh, planning in conjunction with council and the land managers? Does that make it clearer? Council, Bob, did you hear Kylie? No, it, it's um, it's not coming through very clear um, from halfway up the, the room to the back. So, so I gather that Kylie mentioned something about the the joint tourist route planning, and and she thought it might include all land managers. Uh, I'm more thinking of actual enterprise, um, private enterprise, um, going in collaboration with. Um, say state forests to, to implement tourist um, facilities. Uh, I know it happens in other part of the country, you know, um, eco resorts or, or whatever. I just think we should leave the gate open and make it um, part of our tourism uh, planning to, to every now and again go and speak to these land managers just to find out what they're open to. Yep. Councillor, can I suggest that you, if you could, do you want to email Kylie something to do with it? And Kylie's referred to the, to the last one, page 25, in the actions to encourage cross border tourism collaboration plans and land use planning to enable consistency in, consistency in land use planning controls and joint tourist route planning. If you want to add something into that with, with some wording, that's what, that was a suggestion. Yep. Yeah, I can, sure. Yeah. Yeah, no worries, Mr. Mayor. I can do that. That would be good, and, and today would be good, Bob. Okay, okay, will do. Right well, up. Yes, Mr. CA. Three, Mr. Mayor, perhaps, perhaps it's as simple as a comma after replanning, uh, including publicly owned lands, full stop. Simple as that. Yep. Councillor Rowan? Yeah, at, at least that, that puts it on there, um, Mr. CA. Thanks. And um, yeah, I'd probably be happy with that, I think. Yep. At, least, at least it's in the frame then, that's all. Yep. Okay. Guess we're doing with the strategic plan. Um, any more questions to start to do with this? No? Thank you very much for your input. I mean, good, it's an important document. All in favour of the adoption? We no, I can't adopt until I've given it until I've spoken to Council Barry to give you a list of things that you might like to consider and he might wish to propose to them. Okay. Well, we can do that. We might break for a bit of a little lunch and then we'll work on from there. Okay, so could I, could I have a move and a second to suspend standing orders, please? Councillor Murray can be taken by Councillor Barry. I thank you for the favour. What a bit of smoke. Thank you. Uh, um, Aaron, did you send that email I sent 